15 Things Queen Elizabeth II Left Behind for the Royal Family It should come as no surprise that Queen Elizabeth II was a very wealthy woman, given her position as the head of the most renowned monarchy in history. How much was Queen Elizabeth actually worth? Since the 96-year-old Queen Elizabeth passed away on September 8, 2022, many people have wondered who would inherit Queen Elizabeth's wealth and what her net worth was. Let's jump to the list. We will be discussing her monetary worth in between the list of interesting things Her Majesty has left behind. Number 1. The Jewelry What will King Charles do with all of this jewelry? Will Camilla and Kate truly get nothing? Charles gets everything. This includes the precious stones, Canaan claims. Even if they don't officially own them, the women will almost certainly have their pick. The Queen has loaned jewels to Camilla and Catherine. The Delhi Derber tiara was on permanent loan to Camilla. And I expect Charles to continue that loan, says Koenig. Among the items loaned to the new Princess of Wales are brooches, earrings, pearl necklaces, and of course, tiaras. She was given none. Everything was borrowed. Charles will now do the lending. Aside from loans, it's possible that some of Charles's unofficial bequests will include jewelry. Kate, Meghan, Eugene, and Beatrice all wore glittering, priceless tiaras loaned by the Queen at their respective weddings. They may reasonably expect to pick them up now, but that isn't guaranteed, McMahon says. The British royal family's wealth is complicated. A portion of their wealth is linked to crown property, such as the crown jewels and funds that can only be used for official purposes. Some of the crown's assets can be used to generate revenue, but they cannot be sold. Keep an eye out for future royal appearances to see who might have received these items. As one royal expert ponders, perhaps we will see Princess Beatrice wearing one of the Queen's bracelets one day. Was it a bequest or given before her death? Number 2. Trust Money Queen Elizabeth II had established trust funds for her children and grandchildren to provide them with income. This private information is available thanks to our royal expert, Koenig. Furthermore, the inheritors may have trust funds from the Queen's mother, whose entire estate was inherited by the Queen at her demise. The Queen's mother had established trust funds for her great-grandchildren in 1994. Now ex-Prince Harry received more than Prince William due to his future positions. Therefore, it's understood that there are hefty trust funds left behind by the Queen for her grandchildren. Number 3. The Royal Canines Other relatives have inherited four-legged possessions. The Queen's infamous and beloved Corgis was given in adoption to the Duke of Yorkshire Prince Andrew after Prince Philip's death. Her other two loyal beast friends, pun intended, were given to a staff member. Since Andrew had been relieved of his public duties and will not even be allowed to wear his military uniform at Queen Elizabeth's funeral, due to allegations of sexual abuse, he and his ex-wife Sarah, Duchess of York, both still reside on the grounds of Windsor Estate and will most likely continue to do so, though it is unknown if they will receive any additional bequests. So, how much is the Crown Estate worth? Before we jump into the rest of the things left behind by the Queen, let's discuss the Crown Estate's worth. Queen Elizabeth's personal wealth is distinct from the Crown Estate, which Forbes estimates is worth $19.5 billion. This estate includes official royal palaces as well as the royal art collection and other assets, including the official crown jewels. However, since her death, this jewelry collection has received inspection regarding the jewels which were taken from the invaded areas by the British Empire. It has not yet been announced whether any of these belongings will be returned to their rightful owners. A fact that not many people know is, the Crown Estate is a corporation that is separate from the government, and it holds the assets in trust for the government and the monarchy. Since 1760, the monarchy has given the government revenue from these assets. The monarchy receives a percentage of that income, now known as the Sovereign Grant, but it can only be used to fund official royal business, 
such as the upkeep of the royal residences, staff, and travel for the royal family's thousands of official engagements each year. The sovereign grant's profit percentage was increased from 15% to a whopping 25% in 2017-2018 to allow for the restoration of Buckingham Palace. The Crown Estate isn't the king's personal piggy bank, but he gets a quarter of the profits, historian and author Tony McMahon rightly say. The profit earned by the Crown Estate has been on the lower side in the previous years due to COVID-19 closures, but the sovereign grant for 2022-2023 remains $96.8 million. Resuming back to the list. Number 4. Buckingham Palace Buckingham Palace is the monarch of the United Kingdom's London residence and administrative headquarters. The palace, which is located in the city of Westminster, was originally known as Buckingham House and was built in 1703 for the Duke of Buckingham. It was purchased as a private residence for Queen Charlotte by King George III in 1761 and became known as the Queen's House. The palace has been expanded and remodeled over the years, most notably by Sir Aston Webb in 1913 and has served as the British monarch's official royal palace since 1837. The palace has 775 rooms and an area of 828,818 square feet, including 19 staterooms, 52 royal and guest bedrooms, 188 staff bedrooms, 92 offices, and 78 bathrooms. There's also a post office, a swimming pool, a doctor's surgery, a jeweler, a florist, and a cinema at the palace. Given her position as the head of the most illustrious monarchy in history, it should come as no surprise that Queen Elizabeth II was a very wealthy woman, capable of leaving such palaces to inherit. The palace is estimated to be worth around $4.9 billion in 2022. The palace is not open to the public, but the daily changing of the guard ceremony is held there, and the palace's state rooms are open to visitors during the summer months. Number 5. Holyrood Palace Holyrood Palace is the British monarch's official residence in Scotland. The palace is located at the foot of the Royal Mile in Edinburgh, Scotland's capital city. The palace was built as a guesthouse for King James IV in the early 16th century and has served as the monarch's primary residence in Scotland since the 17th century. The palace has over a dozen state rooms and private apartments, including the throne room, the great gallery, and the king's bedchamber, and is 5,000 square meters in size. The palace also has its own garden, which is accessible to the general public. The palace is not privately owned. It's owned by the British government and is not open to the public. The palace serves as the monarch's official residence in Scotland and is open to the public during the summer months. Number 6. Hillsborough Castle Hillsborough Castle is the British monarch's official residence in Northern Ireland. The palace is set in beautiful gardens, parklands, and woodlands in County Down, Northern Ireland. The palace was originally built as a private residence in the 18th century and was extensively remodeled in the 19th century. The palace is approximately 100 acres in size and contains over a dozen staterooms private apartments, as well as beautiful gardens, parklands, and woodlands. The palace also has its own garden, which is accessible to the general public. Hillsborough is not a castle, but rather a late 18th century Irish big house. It was very common for the wealthy, predominantly Anglo-Irish upper classes to refer to their grand country houses as castles. As this reinforced their family's antiquity, the hills were well-known hosts, and both the fort and the house witnessed some memorable celebrations. Hillsborough Castle is owned by the British state and is not privately owned. The monarch uses the palace for official engagements and ceremonies in Northern Ireland, and tours are available to the public. Number 7. Swans in some parts of the United Kingdom, the Queen of England plays a ceremonial role in the ownership of swans. The Queen, according to an ancient tradition known as Swan Upping, 
has the right to claim ownership of all unmarked mute swans in certain stretches of the Thames River. This 12th century tradition is still carried out annually by the Queen's Swan Marker and a team of swan uppers. The goal of this tradition is to keep an eye on the swan population and ensure their well-being. It should be noted that the queen no longer eats the swans, and the tradition is now purely ceremonial. Number 8. The Tower of London The Tower of London is a historic castle in London, England, located on the north bank of the River Thames. William the Conqueror founded it in 1066 and it has served as a royal palace, prison, treasury, and armory throughout its history. The tower is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, as a popular tourist destination, attracting millions of visitors each year. Over the centuries, the tower has served as both a powerful symbol of state authority and a source of fear. Did you know about the execution of prisoners at the tower? Over 800 years later, on August 15, 1941, Joseph Jacobs was the last person executed by firing squad at the tower, having been found guilty of spying for Germany during World War II. Between then and now, the tower has housed Scottish kings and French dukes, young princes and princesses, lords, ladies, and archbishops, as well as common thieves, religious conspirators, and even a few politicians. The Tower of London's net worth is difficult to estimate because it's not only a historical and cultural site, but also a functioning institution that provides a variety of services to the public and the government. The Crown Estate, which is in charge of the tower's management and upkeep, is worth approximately $12.4 billion. Number 9. Hyde Park Hyde Park is one of London, England's largest royal parks, covering an area of 350 acres. It's in the city of Westminster as well as Kensington and Chelsea. Many famous landmarks can be found in the park, including the Serpentine Lake, the Diana Memorial Fountain, and the Italian Gardens. Several major events and activities take place in Hyde Park, including the Serpentine Pavilion, the Hyde Park Summer Festival, and the Hyde Park Winter Wonderland. Not many people are aware, but the park has not always been an open green space for people to explore, but it's actually been private land for much of its history. It was founded in 1536 by King Henry VIII, who used it as a private hunting reserve with his noblemen. The Crown Estate owns Hyde Park, which is a collection of lands and holdings in the United Kingdom belonging to the British monarchy. Number 10. Regent Street Regent Street is a major shopping street in London, England, situated in city's west end. It stretches from Piccadilly Circus in the south to Oxford Circus in the north and houses many high-end retailers and department stores including Liberty, Hamleys, and the Apple Store. Regent Street is also well known for its Victorian architecture and its annual Christmas light show. Regent Street's net worth is difficult to estimate because it's a commercial area whose value fluctuates depending on the economy and the real estate market. However, Regent Street properties are considered prime real estate and are among the most expensive in London. Number 11. Queen's Art Collection Buckingham Palace, the Queen's official residence, houses a vast collection of artwork and other treasures. The art collection at the palace includes works by many famous artists, including Rembrandt, Rubens, Canaletto, and Vermeer. Among the most notable works in the palace collection are Raphael's cartoons. Raphael created a set of 10 large cartoons, full-size designs, for tapestries in the early 16th century. They depict scenes from the lives of St. Peter and St. Paul and are regarded as some of the Renaissance's greatest masterpieces. The George IV State Diadem is a diamond and pearl tiara made in 1820 for King George IV. It's regarded as one of the most valuable pieces of jewelry in the royal collection. The Great Bed of Ware This is a great four-poster bed from the 16th century that's regarded as one of the most significant surviving examples of Elizabethan furniture. The Virgin and Child, with St. Anne and St. John the Baptist by Leonardo da Vinci. This is a cartoon by Leonardo da Vinci, 
widely regarded as one of history's greatest artists. It is worth noting that the Queen's art collection is vast, and it's difficult to estimate the collection's net worth as a whole, as the value of each piece is incalculable due to historical and cultural significance. However, the art collection is estimated to be worth billions of dollars, taking into account the value of the masterpieces, as well as their historical and cultural significance. Number 12. The Royal Cars The Queen of England has a royal car collection that includes both new and vintage vehicles that she uses for official engagements and ceremonial occasions. Among the collection's most notable vehicles are the State Limousine. The State Limousine is the official car of the British monarch and is used for official events such as the state opening of parliament and trooping the color. The current State Limousine is a specially modified Bentley State Limousine from 2002. The Royal Train The Royal Train is a specifically outfitted train used for official engagements by the Queen and other members of the royal family. It features a number of luxurious carriages with bedrooms, bathrooms, and a dining car. The Queen's Rolls-Royce Phantom 6 This is a vintage car that the Queen first used in 1978. The vehicle is a stretched Rolls-Royce Phantom 6, which was produced between 1968 and 1990. The Queen's Aston Martin the British car manufacturer, Aston Martin, presented the Queen with this car in 1951, an Aston Martin DB5. All the cars owned by the Queen have an astonishing amount of value due to her status and the car being owned by the royal family. Number 13. Diamond Diadem the Queen of England wears the diamond diadem on formal occasions, such as the state opening of Parliament and the annual Trooping the Colour ceremony. Rundle, Bridge and Rundle, a prestigious London jeweler, created the diadem for King George IV in 1820. It has a gold band set with diamonds, with a large diamond in the center. Queen Victoria, Queen Alexandra, Queen Mary, and now Queen Elizabeth II have all worn the diadem. Queen Elizabeth II wore the diadem on her way to her coronation in 1953, and she also wore it on many other occasions including her silver, golden, and diamond jubilee celebrations. The diadem is not only a piece of jewelry, but also a symbol of the monarchy and its significance in British history. Number 14. Fabergé Collection the Queen's Fabergé collection consists of Fabergé objects owned by the British royal family. The collection includes Easter eggs, figurines, and other decorative items designed by the House of Fabergé, a well-known Russian jewelry house. King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra began the collection, which was later expanded by King George V and Queen Mary. The Rothschild Fabergé Egg a Fabergé egg created in 1902 as a gift for King Edward VII's wife, Queen Alexandra. It's made of gold and set with diamonds, rubies, and sapphires. The Royal Danish Fabergé egg, another Fabergé egg created in 1903 as a gift for King Edward VII's wife, Queen Alexandra. The Imperial Coronation egg was designed by Fabergé in 1897 to commemorate the coronation of Tsar Nicholas II and Tsarina Alexandra. It's made of gold and encrusted with diamonds, rubies, and sapphires, and it's considered one of the collection's most important pieces. The Fabergé objects are considered priceless masterpieces of jewelry art. Number 15. Westminster Abbey Westminster Abbey is a large Gothic church in the English town of Westminster. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most famous religious buildings in the world. The Abbey has a long history, dating back to the 11th century, and has hosted many significant events in British history, such as royal coronations and weddings. The Coronation Chair Since 1308, this chair has been used to coronate every British monarch. It is made of oak and is adorned with the traditional coronation stone, the Stone of Scone, the Tomb of the Unknown Warrior. This is a tomb where the remains of an unidentified British soldier who died during World War I are kept. It was the first of its kind in the world, built to honor the memory of all the soldiers who died during the war. 
The Poet's Corner. This is a section of the Abbey where many famous poets and writers, including Chaucer, Milton, and Dickens, are buried or memorialized. The Royal Air Force Chapel. This chapel is dedicated to the memory of Royal Air Force members who died in the line of duty. Westminster Abbey is regarded as one of London's most important historical and cultural landmarks, with incalculable historical and cultural value. The Abbey generates its own revenue through admission fees and merchandise sales, and is not supported by public funds. Coming to the end of the list. Who will be the heir to the Queen's fortune? Although royal wills are not made public, Koenig, the royal expert, is confident that everything will be left to Charles. This includes, among other things, personal property, artwork, jewelry, a stud farm, and horses. Charles will receive everything in her opinion. In her words, everything, absolutely everything. Why? Because there's no inheritance tax. Yes, you heard that correctly. In the United Kingdom, wealth transferred from sovereign to sovereign is not taxed. We already discussed the specifics of British inheritance taxation in the video. Hence, suffice it to say, Charles is in for a windfall. King Charles will also receive the Sovereign Grant, which will be used for the monarch's official spending. Despite his limited role in government, King Charles will still attend hundreds of official engagements each year as monarch. However, Charles has long been known for his views on reducing the monarchy. So, it will only benefit a small group of senior royals, dubbed the Firm, who work for the monarchy. Queen Consort Camilla, Prince William, Princess Catherine, Prince Edward, his wife Sophie, Countess of Wessex, and Princess Anne, the Queen's daughter, are all on the list. Conclusion Cool, huh? That's quite an interesting list of heirs and items the Queen has left behind. So what do you think? Which princess will end up inheriting the diamond tiara? And what about Corgus? Where will it go after Prince Andrew's banishment? Comment down below and let us know your favorite thing on the list. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to our channel. Click on the bell icon to get notified for our upcoming videos. We will see you next time.